So this is one of those really rare occasions where we're not going to delete the default cube. And uh, wait, what? I? Okay. So maybe we'll just delete this one cube and then add a less sentient one. Someone should probably uh, report that bug. That bug. That bug. I could barely give two damn about a deal. Don't see no point just to sell off my appeal. They don't even want me here if I'ma keep it real. Too many rappers, too little spots to fill. Just this first burpee, the whole EP is deceased. Been the civil went to dread it and for you to be. Steezy started off and then he passed that shit to me. Passing so to speak. Hello and welcome, I am Dennis Mabuka and in this video we'll be looking at uh, really simple techniques to creating this wormhole effect from the intro. And it's really simple, anyone could do it. But before that, um, remember to check out the Gumroad for products, assets and free project files uh, from the projects that you see here on YouTube and many many more. So with that, let's just jump into Blender and see what we can get done. So if we take a look at the project file for that scene, you'll see how it looks. We're just using um, a bunch of tricks to give the illusion of moving really, really fast through space. When uh, in the project, you can see everything is really happening just around the center of the world. So we'll just see how to get this set up inside Blender. So I've added a cylinder here in a new scene and I've tweaked the shape a bit. And I want to continue tweaking the shape. So I'll add um, a subsurf modifier. And then I'll select the third edge loops from the edges. And then with the pivot point set to individual origins and I'll enable the proportional editing and set it to sharp. And then I want to scale this down and have a shape like that. And you're going to see in a second why um why we did this and then going to add an empty to the scene and the purpose of this empty will be to create that illusion of movement through space by creating um a displacement on the mesh of this cylinder and then tying that um displacement texture to the object which is this empty and then now moving that texture by moving the empty thereby creating an illusion of movement while the cylinder is remains in place. So I'll select the object um, and then add a displace modifier and then create a new texture and call it displace. And then I'll set the texture to add the texture type to clouds. And then you can play with the scale, uh, the size of the texture right there. But then back in the modifier, I'm going to set the coordinates to object and then select that empty that we created. And now you'll see if you select the empty and move it around, it's going to move that displacement on the cylinder. The next thing we want to do is create that illusion of turning and bending around corners while inside that wormhole. So for a moment, I'll just disable the displace modifier right there and then select the cylinder and go into edit mode. And then with the outermost um, edge loop selected, I'll select that shift S cursor to, to selected, and then I'd, I'll add an empty at that spot. And then I'll do the same for the opposite side. Shift S, and then add an empty. And then now with this empty selected, I'll select the cylinder and go into edit mode. And with those vertices selected, no, in fact, I'll select the vertices from this edge to the center. So up to right there. And then I'll say Control H and hook to selected object. That way, if you now leave edit mode and move about this empty, you'll see that it moves around with all those vertices that we parented to, to it. And then I'll do the same for the opposite side also. Select that, edit mode, and then invert that selection, control H, and hook to selected object. 
And you'll notice that the hook modifier is added on top of the stack because um, when you use the hook modifier, especially with modifiers that add geometry onto your object, like the subsurf modifier, if you add the hook modifier afterward, the new geometry generated is going to be ignored by the hook modifier and it will produce uh, all sorts of errors. So that's why you see uh, the hook modifier is added on top of the stack automatically. With the modifiers added, I'm going to go to the fall off and I like to use uh, sharp. So if I just grab this and move it and then grab this and move it and then back in the modifiers, if you tweak the fall off, you'll see how that affects um, how the modifier influences your model. And then I'll do the same for the other one. Play with the fall off up to something like that. And then I'll use sharp, something like that. So now if you grab the empties and move them around, you'll see how um, they influence the mesh. And you can now go back and enable all your modifiers and see how it looks. So now before we get to the really sweet part, which is the shading, we want to set up our animation and we're going to do this procedurally. So with the empty controlling the displacement selected, I'm just going to move to the animation workspace and place a keyframe in its X location and then add a generator. And then you can play with this value to tweak the speed, the slope of the movement in the X axis. I'll just play to show you what that does. And I want something about that speed is, is, is cool. Maybe even a bit faster. And then I'll select the empty on the left and place a keyframe in its X, Y, and Z locations. And then I'll add a noise, noise modifier. And you can play with the value and see what that does. So I'll increase the scale of this noise modifier and you can see what that does. But in the x-axis, I don't want it to be so extreme, so I'll make it something like that. And then I'll copy this modifier and then select the y location and paste that and tweak the phase. And then select the z location, paste that and tweak the phase again to just give it a different animation. And you can see the effect that that has on the, on the object that we have. I'll do the same on the empty on the right. So select it, paste a keyframe in the X, Y, and Z, and then just paste the modifier while tweaking the phase. Select the next, paste, tweak the phase, select the Z, paste, and tweak the phase. So that easily you can see how we have a nice and dynamic animation. And if you moved into the tube itself, You'll see how that gives you that illusion of turning and bending around corners when in reality you're just, you're not really moving, it's the object itself that's moving around. So now for the animation, uh, the shading I mean, and this part is really, really fun because this is where you really get to customize the look of your effect and give it that feeling that um, you really want. So for example, if you look at uh, the file from the intro, You'll notice that when the portal is blue, I have sort of these straight digital orderly lines and some dots running along the length of the tunnel to sort of give it this digital feeling. And as the animation plays and as it starts getting corrupted and turns red, I have this sort of chaotic, noisy pattern to sort of just change that, to give it that feeling that uh, I was going for. So this is where you can really get to tweak your effect and get it to look all sorts of ways. So we're going to look at how to go about that. So inside the shading tab, I want first to separate the materials for the outside and the inside of, the, of this colon, I mean of this portal. So inside the shading tab with the cylinder selected, I'm going to add a new material. And I'll delete the, 
Uh, in fact, we might just leave it there for now. I'll add a mix shader. So mix shader, and then add an emission. Right shader, emission into the bottom input. And what I want to do, I want the principal shader and the emission shader to occupy the inside surface and the outside surface respectively. So I'll just add a geometry node and use the back facing output from this node inside this factor. And like that, you'll see that the emission is inside while the principal BSDF is outside. And we might actually want to flip these two just like that. And it might seem weird that we're giving an emission to the outside where while the animation will be viewing the tunnel from the inside, but it will make sense in a second. So we might just leave this one as is right there and work on the inside surface first. So while we're inside, I'll delete this principal BSDF and add another emission shader. So I'll just duplicate this, plug it into the bottom input. And then I'm going to use um, a layer weight node together with a color ramp. And just like this, we're going to be using this mask to drive the emission of the inside surface. So I'll plug this into the into the strength actually of the emission shader and see what that looks like. And then we can now start using this color ramp to tweak how this material is going to look on the inside surface. And I like to use B spline and just play with that. Now this is where you can really start playing around and tweaking the look of your effect. And I encourage you to go around and play around and come up with stuff that looks uh, uh, lots of different things because that's where the, the discovery will be. Now with that done, now we're going to see the reason why we created that peculiar shape in our cylinder and give the outside material some emission even though we'll be looking at the animation from the inside of the object. So I'll select the object and plug in back this emission shader to the top side. And then I'm going to really crank up the emission value of the outside emission really, really high and give it a similar color to the inside and then go back inside and play the animation. And you'll notice as the animation plays every once in a while at the at the outside of that of this colon, I mean of this portal, you'll notice that you get really bright flashes. And because of how we shape those tips, every once in a while as the displacement is doing its thing from the outside, there's clipping in the mesh. The mesh clips with itself so that even from the inside, we'll be able to see this a very bright emissive material, which um, gives it a really, really nice effect where every once in a while you'll see lights flashing and I just like uh, that little extra kind of uh, thing happening there. To now start detailing this effect, so with this as a base, I'm going to select the cylinder and duplicate it. And then inside edit mode, I'm going to scale down along the normals, this new duplicate that we've created to make it a bit smaller. And then you can see what that looks like. And then I'm going to duplicate this material and just call it maybe portal details. Yeah. And then since for this one, we don't need that inside outside effect, I'm going to delete these. And then we're going to delete one of the emission shaders and add a transparent shader. So shader, transparent. And then we'll jump inside the materials and then just set the blend mode under settings to alpha blend or alpha hashed. And then we're going to use now a new texture to blend between these two materials. So let's use a brick texture, see what that looks like. And then you can start playing with these settings to tweak your material until you have something you like.
And then something cool about this is you can add on top as many layers as you like using different sorts of these textures and layer them on top of each other to get all sorts of different kinds of effects. So I encourage you to play around and see what you can come up with. So lastly, I'd like to go over how I got the cube to glitch like this and sync that effect with the heart, the audio of the heartbeat. So with the cube selected, you'll see it has a, a displace modifier and it's the strength of the displace modifier that's being animated. So if I just deleted this keyframe, uh, clear keyframes, and if I play this, if I increase the strength, you'll see what's happening with the cube. So what I've done is I've added a displace modifier and the texture driving this displace modifier is, uh, is some glitchy footage. So that's why you can see even without any animation in our, in our displace modifier, there's already motion happening because the motion is baked into the texture that I'm using to displace the mesh. So what we can do with this is if you reduce the strength to zero, you won't see any displacement happening. So we want now to animate the value of this strength to bring in that uh, glitchy motion. So I'll place a keyframe in the strength of this displace modifier. And then with this value selected, I'll make sure I have the strength selected. I'll go to key and then big sound to F curves. And because I know the audio I'm using is just full of really low frequencies, that sound of the heartbeat, I'll limit the frequency to uh, zero, between zero and 150, and then just big sound to F curves. In fact, I'll make sure first that my cursor is at the starting point and then repeat that process. Big sound to F curves, exactly. So now it aligns perfectly with everything else that's animated in the scene. So now if you play the animation, you'll see how as the audio plays, that audio is driving the displacement of your strength. And so that's what I went ahead and did to the material. So you can see it as, it, as it's glitching, it's changing in color. As it's glitching, also the color of the portal is changing along with the cube. So I just repeated that process for all these um, objects in the scene to just have this effect where the audio is sort of influencing the, dyna the dynamics of the scene. So yeah, I think that's all I have for you for this video. Make sure to check back pretty soon for another episode. And remember, if you make something from these videos, make sure to tag me online. I'd really like to see them and share them. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.